stupid Jigglypuff made me fall asleep again and on disgusting sewer floor. Like, ugh, I feel all grimy and dirty. Ugh. Okay, I'm assuming Tilly drew on my face. Did they draw on my face? Guys, I don't know. Let me take a look. Um, okay. Yeah, I drew on my face. Ugh. God, I'm gonna kill the Jigglypuff. But be sure, I'll be right back. I'm just gonna go wash my face again and go to a different location, so I'll be right back. <sighs> okay, well, be sure, I got freaking cleaned the shit off my face. I ran for God knows how long, and now I'm in the middle of a desert. It's hot as hell here, and I'm hoping that the Jigglypuff will not find me, because if it does, I'm gonna strangle it, or shoot it, or whatever, stab it. I don't know. I don't have nothing to kill it with yet, but I will find something. Ah! But, let's calm down, because also being in the desert is making me think about the next part of my list, will be the ground types. Alright, so no further ado, let's get started. Number 10, Quacksire. Now, Quacksire is number 10 mainly because I just think it looks adorable, especially with its derpy face. Now, I do like Wooper too. I think I like Wooper a little more than Quacksire, but again, Quacksire is, really, I would say, a little more useful in battle. Okay, just saying because it's, you know, more powerful. And I just like it's more derpier face than Whipper is, to be honest. Especially when he has his flippers doing like that little salute like thing, doing like whip. Uh, just me, I just think it's adorable. Number nine, Claydol. Now, Claydol is number nine mainly because I just like the design of it. It just looks cool. And like when it comes to like ancient history and stuff, I do really like stuff like that. Okay, and this one just definitely speaks of like ancient history, and it actually is based on like ancient like potteries and dolls and stuff like that. So again, I just like the design. It's not that bad though, and as a Pokemon too, like it has good defense and special defense actually for sure. But it does have like six weaknesses. Okay, where it does twice the damage. So it, I don't know like, about that yet. Okay, but other than all, Clay Doll is like an interesting Pokemon nonetheless. Number eight. Dawnfan. Now, Dawnfan is a Pokemon I love a lot, mainly because, not just because it looks good, but also it, more for a nostalgic reason, from the very first Pokemon movie. Because that's actually when Dawnfan was first introduced. At the beginning of the movie, actually, well, not the exact beginning, but the beginning part where you see Ash and the gang, okay? Ash was challenged by a trainer. And he actually used a Dawnfan. Now, when I first saw that, and maybe a couple of other you guys first saw that, we didn't know what that was, okay? I was like, what is this Pokemon and where the hell to get it? Because when I first saw that, I looked at all the Pokemon, okay? Well, everyone in the Pokemon game of the red, blue, and yellow version, okay? And I couldn't find it. But then when the second generation came out and we saw it, actually, Dom Fan, I was like, I had to get it. And man, I was happy to get it. But then later down the road, Dom Fan is, I would say, still a good Pokemon to have. But late, for like, later on in the game, or for competitive battle, maybe not so much. But still, Dolphin is still one of my favorite ground type Pokemons, regardless if it's good or bad. Number 7, Sand Slash. Now, Sand Slash is a Pokemon I like because, I just, again, I love the design of this one, actually. Okay, it just looks actually fierce with, like, with the little spikes it has on its back and the claws. Okay, now it's also not that bad, actually, in both physical attack and physical defense. But again, not much in its special attack and special defense, though, unfortunately. And its abilities are kind of good, too. I would say only during Sandstorms, of course, because it's Sand Veil and then Sand Rush. Now, they only work when Sandstorm is in effect, but with Sand Veil, it just increases the invasiveness, okay? And then Sand Rush, it just doubles its speed. And again, Sand Trash is not that speedy, I would say, but with the Sand Rush ability, it will definitely make up for, like, other things like that. Like I said, okay? It is a Glass Cannon for the special defense, I would say, but if at least you can get the first hit or a couple of good hits then, you know, I think Sand um, sure would be a pretty good Pokemon to have in certain certain stamps, of course. Number 6, Marowak. Now Marowak's number 6 mainly because I think this one is more useful than the previous ones I mentioned, okay? Not because I- ah, uh, fuck. Number 6, Marowak. Now Marowak's number 6 mainly because not just for his looks, okay? like the previous one, because I usually pick from 10 to 6, mainly on its appearances. But I do think this one's more useful because, okay, of its abilities, really. Okay? 
Now, with his abilities like uh, Rock Hard, okay, any moves that have recoil damage won't do that then. Alright, so basically you can use Double Edge or um, Draco Miria or whatever attacks that basically has recoil damage, it won't affect it basically. So you don't have to worry about that right there. Okay, Lightning Rod, I would say, is kind of useful for him. Like, if you're doing double battles at least, okay? But if you're doing single battles, it just seems kind of stupid because no one's going to use their electric type moves on the ground type because it's not going to do anything. Now, the only benefits of Lightning Rod then will increase its special attack once they, like, you know, a Pokemon, uh, not a Pokemon, well, yes, a Pokemon, opponents of Pokemon, there you go, uh, uses an electric type move, yeah. But, like I said, there's no point because also Marowak is more of a physical attacker than a special attacker, so that doesn't seem like it would be a reason for that, okay? And also, it's hidden ability body on, um, battle armor, not body armor, battle armor, okay? Well, basically, it will prevent critical damage onto that Pokemon. Number 5, Mamoswine. Now, Mamoswine is number 5 mainly because it's just such a badass Pokemon right there. It just looks so cool and menacing, but also it is a beast in its physical attack. Okay? As well as it has some great HP as well. Though, like, its defense and special defense are not entirely that good. Okay? And it does have a few weaknesses, of course, too. But if you also get a uh, Mammoth Swine with the build hidden ability uh, of Thick Fat, okay? Then at least the fire type moves, okay, would be doing neutral damage instead of doing twice as much damage. I would just say that. Number four, Needle King and Needle Queen. Now most of you guys are might wondering why is Needle King and Needle Queen number four? Like they're technically two separate different Pokemons. But to me, they're kind of the same thing. Okay, and if you guys agree or disagree with this, let me know in the comments below. I want to hear you guys' opinions. Okay, but like I said, to me, it's the same thing. It's just that like one's like a male version, other one's a female version. So there's really no differences to me, at least. Okay, now the only difference with these two though is their stats. But everything else, they will have either one of the three abilities: Poison Points, Rivalry, or Sheer Force. And with Rivalry too, if the Pokemon's like the same gender, so basically if I Needle King out, well, it's a male, of course, and I'm facing another male, it just boosts my attack then. Okay, and like I said, there's really no difference. I like them both, but if I had to pick which one I normally use, or at least like the most, and also I normally use too, it would be Needle King. Number three, Mudsdale. Now, Mudsdale is number three, not because of its looks, of course, because that's basically how most of my list is being done, is because of its looks, but as well as its usefulness, okay? Plus, I just like it when you get this like donkey looking Pokemon. And then it evolved into like a badass horse right there. Like, god damn. Plus, also, Mudsdale has some pretty impressive HP. Plus, its physical attack is really good too. And it also has some good physical defense. And with its ability Stamina, where if it gets hit by an attack, it increases its defense, physical defense, okay, by one stage, okay, every time it gets hit. So it makes it harder to get knocked out by physical attacks, okay. Now, it's not the fastest Pokemon either, too. But I think it with its um, HP, attack, and physical defense, kind of makes up for it a little bit, okay? Except like too, it does have some really bad special attack, and its special defense too is, I guess, doable maybe, okay? But if you train it the way you want, actually, like at least on its special defense too a little more, all right? Like, if you get like at least, I uh, forgot what nature would be, again, I don't really remember the nature as much, but if you try to get at least a nature where it focuses more on special defense, okay, and less on its special attack, then you could probably get a decent Mudsdale right there, I would say. Okay? But again, I just like Mudsdale because it's just really cool and very, pretty useful in its own right. Number two, Hippaldon. Now, Hippaldon is number two because, again, it looks fierce. I love the design of it. It's based on a hippo, and actually, in the wild, hippos may look cute and adorable sometimes, especially when they're babies, but you don't want to mess with one. And that's Hippowdon right there. You don't want to mess with Hippowdon, okay? Because also, it has some good HP, good physical attack, and physical defense. Now, it's special attack and defense, okay, I guess. Speed, okay. But I also like its ability, Sand Stream, and sand force okay sand stream of course is you know when the pokemon enters the battle it makes a sandstorm okay and then sand force 
actually increases certain attacks basically that will be more effective in the sand, okay? As well as protects the Pokemon from Sandstorm effects. Number one, Swampert. Now Swampert's number one is mainly because I just love the design. It has great stats, except for its speed, but they kinda, I guess you could say kinda fix that a little bit with Mega Swampert, where and when it does Mega Evolve, it gets a boost in the attack. Its speed's still not good, but with its ability Swift Swim, okay, well, if it's raining, it doubles its speed. And if you can double that speed, man, you got a Pokemon to be worried about right there for sure, okay? Because if Swampert or Mega Swampert goes first, it can do some devastating damage for sure, okay? And the strategy I normally do with my Mega Swampert, okay, would be, I. Uh, have Mega Swampert in a double battle with someone that either knows Rain Dance or put out Kyogre with it or Primal Kyogre too, either way, okay? Or of course, you know, have the first Pokemon come out if you're doing signal battles. Have the first Pokemon come out, do like a weather effect, of course, Rain Dance or again, Kyogre, Primal Kyogre. And then either wait for that Pokemon to get knocked out. If it gets knocked out by one hit, it's possible. Or switch it out, all right? For Swampert and Mega Evolve it, and there you go. Okay? Or Mega Swampert if you only have Mega Swampert out. Okay? But that's usually my strategy right there for Mega Swampert or just regular Swampert in general. But again, I like Mega a little more than, re than regular. Because uh, again, it just looks like a hulky Pokemon. Like, well, it's basically like its own version of the Hulk. But no further ado, that was my top 10 ground type Pokemon. If you guys like it, or dislike it let me know in the comments below and make sure you pounce on that like button too if you guys like it or not okay or not like it or not like pounce on that like button if you guys like it basically i don't know why i say like it or not you should probably hit the dislike button please don't hit the dislike button i'll be really upset but again no further ado all uh, right but before i end it too if you guys are new to my channel too actually make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon too so you guys can be notified when i upload new videos and until next time, this is Don Beast howling the oh, shit, you motherfucking jiggly puff.